Medications that treat infection caused by bacteria are either bacteriostatic, they inhibit the growth of the bacteria but do not actually destroy them, or bactericidal, they kill the bacteria directly. Antibiotics may be broad spectrum, that is effective on several groups of microorganisms, or narrow spectrum, effective on fewer groups. Narrow spectrum antibiotics can be used when the particular organism is identified. It is beneficial to use narrow spectrum antibiotics whenever possible to avoid alteration of the body's normal flora. There are several major groups of antibiotics. The most common are sulfanamides, penicillins, cephalosporins, aminoglycosides, macrolides, quinolones, tetracyclines, nitrofurantoins, and metronidazoles. The use of antibiotics has been prevalent for many decades. Though effective against a wide range of infections, their widespread use has also led to the rise of drug-resistant organisms. This problem is exacerbated by several factors. These include prescribing unnecessarily, for example when the disorder is viral rather than bacterial. Other actions leading to resistance are failure to complete the prescribed course, inadequate dosage, or the selection of an antibiotic that is ineffective against the causative organism. Healthcare professionals must prescribe antibiotics in an appropriate manner and educate patients in their proper and effective use. It is essential that the nurse assess all patients for allergies before administering any medication. Also, the nurse should inform the physician and pharmacy by phone of any newly reported allergy and alert all healthcare staff by placing an allergy label on the patient's chart. Over the weekend, a 45-year-old female came to the ER complaining of a sudden onset of burning on urination and urinary frequency. She denied other health problems, had no known allergies, and took no other medications. She was not pregnant. A urine sample was obtained. It had a hazy amber appearance, and urinalysis confirmed the suspected diagnosis of urinary tract infection with a 3-plus white blood cell count, 2-plus bacteria, and trace blood. An oral sulfonamide was ordered by the physician. Sulfonamides are most commonly used for treatment of urinary tract infections because they are active against most bacteria that cause UTIs and they achieve high concentrations in the kidneys. Sulfonamides are bacteriostatic and work by inhibiting one of the steps involved in the biosynthesis of the nucleic acids and proteins essential to the growth of many bacteria. However, if the patient had previously failed treatments with sulfonamides, or in the presence of allergy or other contraindications, another class of medications would have been chosen. The nitrofurantoins, such as furodantin and macrodantin, as well as tetracycline and doxycycline, are usual choices. Nitrofurantoin is contraindicated in pregnant patients at term, as well as in infants under one month of age, because of the possibility of hemolytic anemia due to immature enzyme systems. Tetracycline is known to be harmful to the fetus, so it is not prescribed in pregnancy, although this is less clear with doxycycline. Use of both doxycycline and tetracycline in children under the age of 8 can result in permanent discoloration of the teeth. They are most commonly used in combination therapy because over time bacteria may build up resistance to isolated sulfonamide agents. The combination drug inhibits bacterial cell metabolism at two different stages, thereby decreasing the possibility of resistance. An example of a combination sulfonamide is Bactrim or Septra, also called trimethoprim sulfa. It is a combination of sulfamethoxazole and trimethoprim. The patient was directed to take one tablet in the morning on an empty stomach and one tablet at least two hours after dinner. Taking this drug at 12-hour intervals helps to maintain adequate drug levels in the blood. The patient was encouraged to increase her fluid intake on Bactrim. 
She was also instructed to complete the full course of medication even if she became symptom-free before then. Stopping the medication prematurely may result in the microorganism developing a resistance to the antibiotic. The ER nurse made a follow-up telephone call to the patient two days later. The patient reported that her symptoms had abated and her urine was pale yellow. The nurse reinforced the importance of completing the full course of the medication.